What's up guys, in this video we're gonna be talking about the Thunder Bay 6 and how I use it to edit 4K video as well as use it as a general backup system. First, let's start off with what's inside the box. You'll find various manuals for the software setup as well as assembly of the drives, two keys to unlock the drive bays, a bag of screws to mount the hard drives in the brackets, a power cable, and a Thunderbolt 3 cable. Now, before we get into this any further, I wanna talk about why I purchased the Thunder Bay 6. So previously, my backup system looked a little something like this. Every Black Friday, I would go ahead and buy two eight terabyte easy store drives. And the reason for buying these is during Black Friday, they become extremely cheap. Oftentimes they go down to 130, as low as $120. And it's very easy to remove the hard drive from the shell. And previously inside, you would find a WD red hard drive, which was worth about $250. So it really didn't make a whole lot of sense to go and buy the bare WD red drive when you could get it for $120 or $130 inside of these easy store cases. Once I had both of those drives, I would use one as my on-site archive drive and then I would keep the other one off-site as another archive drive. So if one died, I would still have the other. If my house went in flames, I still had the other one off-site. Now the problem is that this previous year, I finally shot more than eight terabytes of footage. And I imagine in the coming years, it's going to be even more and more. So I started to look into RAID setups where I could store large amounts of data on it, which is how I found the Thunder Bay 6. And the thing that really appealed to me was that I was able to buy the enclosure with out needing to buy the drives with it. With GTEC and Lacie, you had to buy all the drives with them at once, and the drives were a lot more expensive with them, especially when you're talking about me getting these hard drives for $130 at eight terabytes a piece. It ends up being quite a bit cheaper than what GTEC and Lacie were pricing theirs out to be. I think for around 40 terabytes, theirs were a couple thousand, and I think I ended up getting my whole setup for just under $1,300 or maybe right around $1,400. So quite a bit cheaper than what I could get from Lacie or GTEC. To buy the Thunder Bay 6 on its own, it is $579 and they also have options where they can ship it with drives pre-configured for you. But again, I already had the drives because I got them cheap and loaded it into the Thunder Bay myself. So this Black Friday, I bought eight of those eight terabyte easy store drives and then took them all out of the shells and loaded them inside of the Thunder Bay. And then I also bought a 10 terabyte easy store drive and I'm gonna use that as my 2019 offsite backup of all my data. And then I can use the rest of the 40 terabyte inside of the Thunder Bay for the next coming years. I can kind of keep it all in one drive and then have other drives that separates the year's data offsite. Now the process of getting the drives inside of the enclosure was extremely easy. You use the key to unlock the front of the bay and then from there you can unscrew the sleds with your fingers. You pull that out, slide the drive in and you fasten in the four screws to hold the drive. You push the sled back into the bay and then you fasten it with your fingers and you repeat that five more times. On the back of the Thunder Bay, you have an on off switch two Thunderbolt 3 ports, a display port for hooking up a monitor, a power input, and a security lock. Now, once I finally started setting up Soft Raid, things got a little bit confusing because there was a bit of a bug in that version of Soft Raid. Whenever I was trying to initialize or set up the Raid, it just wouldn't build it. I kept getting various errors. So after a day of messing with this, I finally emailed into support and they realized that they had a bug in Soft Raid XT and the Thunder Bay 6 where the license wasn't reading quite right. Um, and so they said they were gonna go ahead and fix that. So the workaround for me was to download the Soft Raid uh, non-XT version and then set up my RAID in that. So it was running in a trial mode, but I was still able to initialize my disks and then set up the RAID from there. Once the RAID was built, Soft Raid XT could see my RAID just fine and everything functioned perfectly from there. But for whatever reason, initializing and setting up the RAID was not working in Soft Raid XT. Hopefully by the time you're watching this video, that's already fixed. But if it's not and you have the same exact issue, that is something you can try. Now, when you right click on your RAID, you'll see an option that says optimize for, and then you have various options that you can set the RAID up for. I actually do not know specifically what these change about the RAID's function. I really don't even have as much as a guess as to what it could be doing, but because I'm doing video production, I set mine to video and then I just left it at that. 
So with the Thunder Bay 6, it supports raid 0, 1, 4, 5, and 10. I ended up picking raid 5, which means I get 40 terabytes of available storage to me. The other eight terabyte is used for parity so that if one of the drive dies, I can pop in a new one and it will rebuild. And now I understand that raid 5 is a bit of a controversial pick. There's a lot of people saying that RAID 5 you can't really trust because oftentimes when it's rebuilding that much data it fails or it rebuilds really slowly. But I wanted to have that extra level of redundancy even if there is the potential of it failing. And even if it does fail, I still have all my data offsite. And if I really needed to get all that data back, I could easily grab that drive and load it back onto the RAID. So with that being said, I could probably just use RAID 0 to get the max amount of speed that I could possibly get. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and try out RAID 5 and see how it goes. I talked to a lot of other video editors that I know and a lot of them are using RAID 5 for their RAIDs and they said in the five to 10 years they've been using it, they have not had any issues. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use RAID 5 for now. But if it ever gives me any issues, I'll go ahead and try RAID 0 or RAID 10. The only problem with RAID 10 is that you lose half of your usable storage, and that's just something I didn't really want to deal with right now. In Blackmagic speed test, I get around 350 megabytes write speed and around 700 and up for read speed. This has been more than capable of handing my 1DX Mark II 4K 60fps footage. So overall, I'm very happy with the speeds that I'm getting out of this. As far as noise goes, it's really not that bad. The only time you really start to hear it is when you're copying footage or you're doing a lot of editing from the drive. But most of the time, you're just gonna be hearing a really quiet hum from the fan that's on the back of the Thunder Bay. Besides the initial hiccup with soft raid on my system, since I've got it up and running, it has run absolutely great on my computer. I have experienced zero slowdowns, and most of the time when I look in activity monitor to see the usage from soft raid, it's not even using above 1% of my CPU. I've probably never even seen it go over 2% but most of the time it's just sitting at 0%. So as far as a software RAID goes, it's really not using any of my CPU, which is great to see. Overall, I've been really happy with my Thunder Bay. This really solves the storage issue that I was having or potentially going to start having. The read and write speeds are great on it. It's a blast to edit from. And now I feel like I have an extra level of redundancy that I didn't necessarily have before and I get all of that storage in one spot. Instead of having to have six separate drives just sitting across my desk, I can hook up one cable, plug it into my computer, and call it good. I'm planning to use this for the next couple years, so if I do have any issues with it, I will definitely let you guys know. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know down below, and I'd be more than happy to answer it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.